Okay, 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 let's not do this just yet. Let's do it right. Right? Right. Good morning, everybody. It's Natsuko here. And for today, which happens to be the birthday of the man himself, Sugiyama Kiyotaka, well, I'm gonna give you guys something special. Something really, really special. Basically, we're gonna go over the Sayonara Ocean. Oh, um, hold on. Basically, we're, we're gonna go over. We're gonna go over Sayonara, Sayonara no Ocean. Darn it. Basically, we're gonna go over the debut single of the man himself from over the years. Something like that. So buckle up, join me, as we're gonna go from 1986 to 2017, as well, according to my information gathering, that's pretty much about all the oceans I could find, and just go over them, you know? Like, we're not gonna really rank them, we're gonna just more of a talk about them in the best way possible, because we're just gonna celebrate, basically. We're gonna celebrate Sarnana Ocean from over the years. So, something like that, and just talk about each one for, like, how, who knows how long, so, yeah. Anyways, join me as we celebrate and just have a blast. Something like that. And also... believe tenderness something 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 yeah um yeah anyways sign on the ocean aka the debut single of kiyotaka sugiyama yes this man released 1986 as the debut single like i just said already well what else can be said this thing is iconic it is awesome it is fantastic to a t it has one of the greatest b-sides ever um shadow and what else can be said like this single is awesome of course it will have an album version and beyond which of course is awesome it has a bit of something different in it something like that like basically what i'm saying is that if you listen closely and beyond there is a cool intro for the album version of this single so there is that there also is ocean which of course is a shorter slightly different version of this single so that's also cool also ocean would actually no sorry on the ocean excuse me would of course debut or really be featured rather excuse me on the joe and coffee cms from 1986 really 85 86 and of course would start seeking out himself and as you know already those cms are my favorite so yes but anyways, Sign on the Ocean is fantastic in every single way, and what else can be said? I mean, this single would kick off not only Kiyotaka's solo career in a nutshell, but also would give us, well, the chance to see Kiyotaka really show that he's a solo man, and also, he can cook. He can cook like a really, really good chef. I guess you could say he's a master chef? Something like that. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, heck yes. Yes, yes, yes. I've been dying to talk about this one because this one is actually one of my favorites of the oceans. This is from 1987. It would be pretty much the opener for this live album, really live video, basically. And it is so much fun. I love how hype and how exciting it is. Like, it is so fast paced and just. Mmm, I love me some live Suki goodness. Like, Kiyotaka, as usual, in live is like, look, he's giving us a good time, and this song definitely is the definition of, look, hype, hype, and so much hype. 
Now, yes, technically a lot of versions of Ocean, or really, yeah, Ocean basically, are the same thing-ish as the studio, but the difference though is that, well, yes, the studio is cool and, well, has something to The point is, the live versions have a bit more flair compared to the studio, is what I'm saying. So, they're still different in some ways, okay? Okay. Anyways, this one here is fantastic. I am in love. I am in love. I love how fast paced this is. It is just so good. And Kyotaka just being as kick ass as he is is just. <sighs> the man's a goat. He's a goat not only in studio, but God in life too. And also, um, next up is gonna be even better. Oh yeah. Nineteen ninety three was a big year for Kiyotaka. He would be marking ten years of being in music, and as a result of that, he would be doing a ten year anniversary concert known as Living in a Paradise because Living in a Paradise, yo, of course Living in a Paradise will have a live album known as I Wanna Hold You Again, which is an absolute fantastic album. And that album would of course have pretty much everything that a fan of Omega Tribe and Kiyotaka would want. Omega Tribe goodness plus Kiyotaka goodness from like well, Beyond, Here and There, Kona Weather, Living in Paradise, a single, and of course, um, that's really about it. So, yeah. Um, it has some deep cuts too, like Okinawa May, Miss Dreamer, Sunset Love Song, of course, sh no, not Shake Shake, not really a deep cut, and just so on. So, either way, this live album, which isn't Warm Front Lawn Sight, has so much to offer as a Kiyotaka fans want, or even as a Megatrucks fan. Omega Trucks fans want. Something like that. Anyways, this album also has Sign on the Ocean, which of course is, well, very different in this album. Kinda, the sound, the arrangement is different, rather, the arrangement, basically. But it is so cool. I love the way this one sounds. I just like the more rock, more guitar heaviness of it, rather. And just, it's just so much fun. Again, Kiyotaka is just having a blast with this song. And I cannot stress how much I love when he's like just having the time of his life on stage. Like this man is just really having a fun time, okay? Okay, and I love that, okay? I love that in this version, like the previous one, really reflects that Kiyotaka is great live and just... <sighs> My god, just... And we're not even at the end yet, because here's the thing, and here's a spoiler. Every version of Sign on an Ocean is really good and it just keeps getting better and better and better so i'm not even done with the perfections or anything like that i'm not even done yet because i'm not so anyways this version here from 1993 is amazing and just another example of just live goodness be still my heart anyways Now, now we can get to this one. We could finally get to this one properly because hell yes. Sign on the Ocean, Ocean 95 from Rhythm from the Ocean, the final track off the album and just <sighs> this one yo. This one is obviously one of my favorites. This one is one of my absolute favorite oceans ever because from the acousticness in the beginning to the build up of an even special, well, even more special rather, it's just... <laughs> no, this version, <clears throat> excuse me, is amazing. This version is so good. I love the fact that Kiyotaka is like... Anyways, um, I love the fact that Kiyotaka is so like... On one hand, give it a bit of a live touch to the, to the song, but then give it a studio touch. Just, it's such a delicious blend of live and studio that it is just. <sighs> I love this version. I love Ocean 95 so much. I do. I like the OG. I like the previous ones, obviously, but 95 has a special place in my heart. Like, literally, when that song plays, I'm like, I'm not skipping you. I'm never skipping you. Skipping is a crime. It's like skipping Outsault Lady. It's like skipping Palm Tree. Hell, it's like skipping Marine Blue. Even though I did that once and I felt really bad. Either way, you can't skip a banger. 
you should never skip a banger, and OSHA 95 is the case. It is a banger, it is an absolute banger, and to be a fangirl for a sec, Kiyotaka's vocal range in this one is just... <sighs> you know, I love you, I love you, and I love you, okay? Enough said, just... <sighs> Can you just not be cool? Like, this man has such a natural talent for being cool. Like, that doesn't make sense, but you get the point. He just is so cool and just... <sighs> Anyways, Ocean 95 is amazing. It is the best version of Sign on Ocean, in my opinion, JK. And, um, next. Next, next, next. This one's a fun one. This one is a really fun one. From 2003, the acoustic version of Cyanone on the Ocean. Future and Hula Moon Sessions really as a little celebration album, basically. Let me rephrase. Hula Moon Sessions basically is the anniversary album of Kiyotaka released in 03 to celebrate 20 years of being in music. So as a result, you have like really mostly cover versions of stuff he's done over the years, like Omega Tribe stuff to more of his solo stuff. And also, more deep cuts like Inspiration and Suki Ekiro. I think I'm saying that one right. From Harvest Story, because Harvest Story is underrated, okay? Okay. Anyways, Saranano no Ocean would, of course, be future in Hula Moon Sessions. And, of course, we have a different arrangement and everything. Basically, it's an acoustic version, and it is so cool. I love the way this one sounds. It is so 2000s-ly delicious, and um, just... That's why, like, when I heard the acoustic version of, you know, Ocean, basically, to get back to that song, I was like, okay, I'm getting goosebumps, I'm getting, like, nostalgia, because it sounds so delicious, like, 2000s, I love it, and it sounds kind of, it, it sort of has a JoJo vibe to it as well. <laughs> I don't know how that makes any sense, but I'm like, I don't know, I just figured to mention that too, but I don't know. I just feel like most of all this song, this version rather, is really, 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 really good. Like the previous ones as usual. And what else can't be said? What else can't be said about Ocean? Ocean just keeps getting better no matter what how it's done. So yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Also, there is the Tokyo Night version of this one, which I did I did want to include because it is kind of different from the acoustic version. Not really, it just has a different opening. But everything else is kind of the same, it's just kind of faster and Kiyotaka has sort of more of a guitar theme rolling, which of course he should have that rolling because he plays guitar. I mean, he does, something like that. Either way, Tokyo Night or Tokyo Session or something, uh, yeah, this album basically is sort of different. It has sort of a different version, rather, of this version of Sarnar Ocean. Jesus. Um, and um, just, uh, yeah. Yep, yep. But anyways, next one. Next, the next, next one, because we got two more left, actually. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, sorry. We have three more left. Whoopsie daisy. Anyways, next. <laughs> this one is more of a live one, not really a different one, but it kind of is different because it's live, so whatever. 2006 would be special for Kiyotaka because 2006 or 06 rather because I'm not saying that whole one ever is really when Kiyotaka would mark 20 years of being in music. Yeah, 20 years. And of course, 20 years means that he can celebrate with a concert, which of course would be this fun little concert from 06. And it would have Ocean again. And this one is mostly fun. It's just like, okay, how about we have a fun version of the song and let's all celebrate because Kyotaka's been doing music for 20 years, guys. Yay! And this version, of course, is not really too big or anything. It's just fun. It's fun. It's exciting. Kyotaka, as usual, has his vocals and everything. Just fun stuff. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Just what else can be said? It's just a fun little version of this song. And just that's it. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, next one. <coughs> This one 
is another fun, fun, fun one. I love this one so much. This one is from I Am Me. Of course, another fun album that is really, really mostly of covers and originals. And it has, of course, the covers, as I just said. And one of them is Ocean, or yeah, again, just, yeah. And this one, I like the way this one sounds. This one, of course, is from 2013, which, of course, really means that it's been about, what? Well, okay, let's do the math here. So, 93, 10, 2003, 2003, 20, 2013, yeah, 30. It's been about 30 years since this man's been in music. So, it's like, you know what? Why not celebrate again? But this time with some something else that's... No, let's celebrate again, but this time, well, just do another cover album, I guess. Yeah, no, nothing really new. But of course, who cares? Because it's still fun nonetheless, and this version of Ocean to get back to that one is awesome. I like the sort of, I like the ocean vibes it has, or the uh, sea vibes it has, rather, because it's just the way it sounds is so much fun. It's like sort of a dance number almost, I don't know, but it's just so much fun. And you have to listen to it to really get what I mean because it's kind of hard to explain the way it sounds because it's like, um, okay. But I think if you listen to this song closely, just go to I Am Me, it's on Spotify. Most of Kyo's stuff is on Spotify, so you can check out I Am Me, I believe. I hope I'm saying that one right. And just check out Sign on the Ocean. Even the other ones, like Miss Night Cruising is also really good. Marine Blue is beautiful as usual. Um, you can check those out too, but definitely give Ocean a listen because the way it sounds in that particular album, even with the cover album, which means everything's like covered and different, it's like, it sounds so cool, it sounds really sea-like and just very, very cool, very fun, very, just, again, really awesome, and again, just, this song, no matter how old it gets, just keeps getting more and more, it keeps getting refreshing each time is what I'm saying, like, it just has such a refreshment that no matter how many times it's played, it never becomes stale, which is amazing because this song to me reminds me a lot of Food Tori where it's like, it gets played so often, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's like, it's cool because this song's a banner and banners deserve all of the love it can get. So Ocean, Food Tori, Some Suspicion, Palm Tree I Wish, you guys deserve all the love in the world. You do. Yes, you do. And now we have come to the grand finale. The grand finale of all grand finales for 2017, that is Live Best. Something like that. Live Best, of course, is another live album for Kyotaka Cheese. And this album here is really, really, really awesome. This album, while well, yes, it is New Sugi, who cares? New Sugi is still fire as usual. Everything that's pumped out of this album is amazing. Live in a Paradise, yes. Palm Tree, yes. Riverside Hotel, yes. Offset Lady, Kenta Action, yes. And just, um, um, everything about this album is amazing. Can somebody please tell me why it doesn't get enough attention? Because this album is amazing. Anyways, Ocean makes an appearance in this album and it is so much fun. Also, Kiyotaka belting. Oh my god, belting. Belty. Belty. Just what? Look, when the man belts, you know you're in for a ride. And also, you're also going to be amazed too. Because the thing about Kiyotaka that's amazing is that even though the man has smoked, he has drank, he has done things to his vocals that make you go, huh, really? But yet, yet despite the choices he's made in his life, Despite the choices, his vocal range is still amazing to a T, and it is still one of the greatest vocal ranges out there. Like, you can fight me if you want to, but I would dare say it. Kiyotaka has one of the greatest vocals, perhaps of all time. Perhaps of all time ever, and yes, I'm being a bit exaggerating, I don't care. I'm just saying, this man's vocal range is incredible to a T, and it is without question one of the best vocals I have ever heard in my entire life. Yes, yes, and yes. Anyways, Ocean. Yes, the fact that Kiyotaka belts 
and this song is amazing. Towards the very end, after the whole song's over with the whole guitar and everything like, as it goes in the studio version back in 86, he pretty much gives all of us, the audience, something that you always should have to keep your ears out for, and that is belting. AKA the thing that makes me go, wait a minute, what? What? This man's range, jeez! Like, literally in live emotion to go off topic for a bit, he does the same thing where he just, just belts and just, you know what? Guys, we're in for a ride. Like, for example, Alpset Lady. Alpset Lady, when he does the make me high, he's like, just, just going at it. Like, okay, just, really? Like, really? Like, what the hell, man? Like, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's astonishing. It is goosebump inducing. It is just, just, wow. But, like I said, it's just amazing that this man has range despite what he's done. And just, you know, just so much admiration, man. So much admiration for a man who is officially a senior citizen. Yes, he'll be 65 this year. Yeah. Anyways, back on topic. So yeah, this version of Sign on the Ocean, yeah, from 2017, from Life Best, basically, is amazing. I love the way it ends with the belting because... Just, it's just, what? Like, this man at this point was almost in his, no, he was about in his 50s, I think. Something like that. I, I'm not doing the math, okay? He was old back then. Like, I guess oldish, whatever. But somehow was able to deliver a really strong belt. This is like moving my heart levels and belting here, guys. If you haven't seen Moving My Heart, listen to that one right now. And you will be in for a ride. That one's a fun one. I love the way Kirtok is like just having a blast with moving, with moving my heart. It just is like going like whatever. But listen to that one. Check out the Warm Front Lawn site, please. And um, that's it. Anyways, this version of Ocean from Life Best again. <coughs> Excuse me. I love the way it ends. And to end it on this note, because I'm gonna just keep rambling at this point. Um, really just end this portion rather, uh, just, th the way the song ends is amazing, it is fantastic, it is just, just, again, just, man, and just, Kiyotaka, just, don't age, don't ever age, don't ever lose your beautiful, high range, high fire vocal range, please never lose that because it is amazing, it is amazing, and how come it keeps getting better and better as you age? What is your secret, man? Alright, so that about concludes this entire thing, and um, that's really about it. I think that was pretty fun, you know, to gush about every version of this song. And I think that was a lot of fun. That was so much fun. And um, I just want to leave at that. Anyways, thank you for watching if you have. If you haven't, then um, it's okay. And um, happy birthday again, Kiyotaka. Happy 65 years of living. You are amazing for 65 years old. Like, you're, you're, you're a senior citizen now, but you're still awesome. And um, that's really about it. Anyways, take care, everybody. Um, I'll see you when I see ya. Of course, in the future, there might be a ranking of Kiyotaka solo albums. There probably will be. And also of Carlos, too. So, stay tuned for that. And also, some other big stuff coming down the road. So, yeah. Anyways, happy birthday, Sugi. Never, ever, ever age. Like, never in your entire life. Please don't. You are awesome. And, um, thank you for over 40 years of music. And just thank you for everything. And um, have a wonderful birthday and much love for me and really to all your fans out there who are like, happy birthday, Kiyotaka. Ow. Ow. And um, yeah, anyways, happy birthday, sir. Uh, thank you again for 40 years of music and um, that's really about it. Yeah. Anyways, Jane and to all of you out there, thank you for your continued support. Thank you for 400 subs, actually 405 or more, jeez. And um, again, stay tuned for more coming down the road. And thank you again for all your support as well. So, Johnny, and take care of yourself. And also, live, laugh, love, Sugiyama Kiyotaka. And also a mega fight because summer never ends, I guess. Oh, wrong reference. Never ending summer, right, right. <laughs>